guys, welcome back to the biggest agricultural platform in Namibia known as Nduna Wengombe, which means headman of cattle. I am, of course, the headman of cattle, Mitchell Mutumba Simata, aka the Nduna Wengombe. Today, on the 13th of February 2022, which is a Sunday, I would love to speak about um, the indigenous goat. I know I did video one where I spoke about the uh, Kavango and the Caprivi. Today, we're going to talk about the Kudene Ovambu and the speckled goat. So without wasting any time, as you guys know, I'm never writing solo. I got my trusted notebook here with my not so flattering handwriting. Let's get into this video on the indigenous goat, which is known as the kunene. Let's start off with the kunene goat. The kunene goat. The kunene goat is a multicolored breed with a wide variety of uniform colors. White, black, brown, red, black, brown, and red and brown. Plus pied and speckled combinations of these colors exist. The goats are covered with hair differing from short straight hair to long straight and long sl long slightly curly hair the goats have long narrow faces with a flat with a flat not flat but with a flat to convex profile the ears are large and droopy horns are present in both sexes a very small percentage of of the population are known to be naturally pulled the horns the horns the horns are present in both sexes. Horns are present in both sexes. A very small percentage of the population are naturally pulled. The, the horns are curved backwards and outwards. So it's curved backwards and outwards. And are medium to large in length. The base of the horns are closely spaced. Beards occur in both sexes, but less in females than in males. With females, the beard is small, and in males, it, is, it differs from small to large. The breed has good length of body, but tends, tends to lack depth, especially in female. The breed has poor meat characteristics and, and, and more so in the females because they are narrow between the, the pin bones. The inner and outer thigh are poor muscled. Males are generally better muscled than females. The breed has characteristic, characteristic sloping rump. Females tend to have a roofy rump. Light and dark color hooves are found in the breed. The Kunene goat can be described as a hardy, lanky, large-framed breed with, a, with slender and finely bone leg, finely boned legs, well adapted to harsh climates of the Kunene region. They are excellent walkers, adapted to walking the long distance between water points and available grazing. The breed is found in the northwest areas of Namibia, known as the Kunene region. It is, the, it is a very dry mountainous area with low, and high, uh, with low and high variation of rainfall. The vegetation is Mupani, Mupani Savannah Felt. The Himba people live in semi-nomadic style, semi style lifestyle, moving with the animals for where grazing is available. So they move from grazing to grazing. That's how the Himba people move about. Now let's get into the second breed of goat, which is the Uvambu goat. Okay, the Uvambu goat. Characteristics of the Ovambo goat. The Ovambo goat is a multicolored breed with a wide variety of uniform colors. You can get white, black, flan, brown, and red brown, plus pied and speckled combinations of the breed. Lighter shades of these colors are predominantly found. The body is covered with short, straight hair. The hair of the hair on the forequarters of males are longer. The profile of the profile of the the profile of the face tends to be flat. The ears are small to medium size and and have a lateral lateral and slight and lateral and slightly forward orientation. Horns are present in both sexes, but polled animals are found in the breed. So this one also you can get naturally polled animals. The horns of females are curved backwards and slightly outwards, and that and that of males are backwards and more outwards. Female horns are slight are, are shorter, and male horns. Female, female horns are short and males have horns of medium length. So males have horns of medium length. Beards are present in both sexes, small in females and large in male. In the case of, in the case of males, the Ovambo goat is small frame breed. The middle, the middle piece tends to be short with good depth. The females, the females and many of the males are not well muscled in good quality uh, not well muscled. In good quality males, the hindquarters are well muscled in the inner and outer thigh. The legs are short to medium length and, and in portion to their bodies. 
The hooves are predominantly dark in color, although light hooves are also occur. The tail is upright, it's upright, upright to medium length with a thin base. It is the smallest indigenous, indigenous breed of goat, goat breed in Namibia. Sexual Sexual dwarfism is a characteristic of the breed. Small females with large males. So the females are smaller, the males are large. The Ovamba goat is found in the central north areas of Namibia known as, as the Oshikoto, Oshana, Omusati, or Hangwena region. It is a vast flat area char characterized by Mupani's, Mupani Savannah Field. In the Oshana region, there are, there are de depressions called Oshanas, where water collects during the rainy season. So that is the that is the Uvambu goat. It's also used for meat and milk, just like the kunene, and it's an indigenous. So it's considered to be a small frame, while the it's considered to be a small frame, while the kunene is considered to be a large frame. So that is it. And occurrence in Namibia is moderate, particularly in the northern part. I think you'd get them, but they're disappearing because people are starting to cross them with 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 heavier, bigger goat breeds. Now we get to the speckled goat. The speckled goat which is the Northern Cape speckled goat. The speckled goat came into Namibia early in the previous century, just after the German occupied occupation around World War I. They were brought to Namibia by pioneer farmers from the Gondwana, Gondwana and the Karoo in, the, in then Cape Colony. The speckled goat's whole body is covered with dark, with dark brown spots and, a white, and white spots on the, for, on the forehead. The head, the head and legs are mostly solid brown, with a brown with a brown stripe occurring on the back. It is slightly longer. It has slightly longer hair due to due to its origin origin in the colder parts of the Karoo. They have excellent pigmentation due to the due to a dark brown skin. The face is straight and wide between the eyes. Both sexes have horns and tend to grow uh, tend to grow outwards. Rams are mus it should not be rams but bucks. Bucks are masculine with per with uh, with pre with with a predominant with predominant hair on the neck hair on the ne on the neck of the of the, the buck of the buck. Then you have beards occur in both sexes, very limited in females, but often but often in males. In females the beard is small and in males it is large. The speckled goat can be described as a medium frame medium frame breed the breed has a relative good has relative good length and depth of body the back is slightly hollow the hindquarters are well muscled the speckled goat is a sloping rump it has a sloping rump the breed has strong legs cow cow hook are cow hook are preventable in the breed the legs are covered with short hair in a short cover of short hair in males the longer with males in males the longer the longer hair, longer hair on the shoulders, may grow down to the four um, to the four legs. The hooves are predominantly dark in color. The tail is short and erect and erected with a thin base. With a thin base, the tail may be brown or speckled in color. So, what are they used for? Skin? I mean, not skin. Purpose? It's it's a it's a meat uh, goat breed. Uh, it's considered its origin is indigenous. Its size is medium. It's not large. The gunene is large. And then its occurrence in Namibia is moderate. So that's the speckled goat. I have some more information on the speckled goat. Here we go. All right. Um, so these are some of the features. It has large lobbed ears. Both male and female have a beard. That's what I mentioned before. The speckled goat. The speckled goat grow a winter coat, which they develop cashmere. I just lost where I was on my notes, but yeah, they grow cashmere. So if you want to get into cashmere production, you can get that because it does grow a very large coat because of the areas where they originated from. So let's look at some of their weights, the weights of, of, of this uh, breeds of goats. We know weights are very important. That is what makes us decide to buy. So Northern Cape speckled goat, female, which is an ewe, a doe, not an ewe, doe, could weigh about 50 to 60 kilograms. And the male, which is a buck, could weigh about 70 to 80 kilograms. And then your kunene goat could weigh about 35 to 40 kilograms. Am I mistaken? Am I mistaking the, the kilograms here? Mm, 
I think uh, in the Ovambo, I think no, the Ovambo has to be heavier. The Ovambo has to be heavier. But the speckle goat male could weigh 70 to 80, and the female could weigh 50 to 60. And then the indigenous one, which is now the Kunene, I believe, the female could weigh about 35 to 40, and a male could weigh about 45 to 50 kilograms. I am speculating. I'm not sure. I hope I am correct with this kilograms. But that's what I got on this um, breed of, of goat. And then there are other breeds of goats besides the speckled and the Kunene here in Namibia. In South Africa, you guys have the Mbuzi, which is a small multicolored semi um semi semi what is it? i can't see this okay the other indigenous goats you can find this also in south africa you have the imbuzi which is a guni type goat it's a small multicolored with semi pendulous ear you have the eastern cape you have the eastern cape tosa tosa lobbed ear it's a multicolored multicolored goat with large lobbed ears then you have the northern cape speckle that's what we spoke about and the kunene that's the two we spoke about so these are the type of goats that are, are are farmed. And with most of these indigenous goats, what I've noticed is beside the use of meat and milk, you can also use their skins, pellets. Their skins are very beautiful. They're multicolored. If you want to make um, pellet rugs or people that probably take the skins and make them into clothing or make them into furniture, you could start, start up a business like that. Or if you want to get into the cashmere business, you could also breed them, particularly the speckled one, which grows the winter coat. And has a summer coat because of the area where it comes from the Karoo does get hot and cold but i don't know if the kunene one because the kunene probably has doesn't have that cold cold winters but probably has cold winters i'm not sure i haven't been to the kunene in the north i know does not really have that cold cold winter so those two breeds might not grow the the fur that you need for for for, for to produce cashmere so with that said ladies and gentlemen that is my information on the different the two actually the three the kunene ovambu speckled goat those are the three indigenous goat breeds that you can find in Namibia including the previous two that I spoke about so it's let's let's actually count them all together it's the Caprivi it's the Kavango it's the Kunene the Vambu the speckled those five are all five indigenous indigenous goat breeds that you can find in this country of Namibia and the occurrence are moderate I believe they are very secluded in their various regions like the Kunene goats you probably find them with the indigenous nomads which are the Wahimba people who move from pasture to pasture the ovambu goat you find them in the central north of the country with the ovambu farmers the kavango you find them probably in the northeastern part of the country with the Lukwangari Lukwangari farmers in the kavango region and in the caprivi you find the caprivi goat with the indigenous caprivian farmers that side so i believe that's where you'd find them and this why they are moderate but i've seen now many goat breeders are starting to register studs particularly the commercial white guys are registering and the black guys are registering commercial studs with the indigenous goats and they're farming with them so those are the five indigenous goat breeds that i had to talk about today those are the those are the i touched on three today but usually those are the five indigenous goat breeds that i wanted to touch on and now with that said ladies and gentlemen i just want to say have yourself a good day bye for now